the great mystery of how the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids has finally been solved after scientists discovered a tiny flaw. And no, it does not involve aliens. Sorry, Elon. Pyramids are a wonder of the ancient world that has stood the test of time and continues to enthrall millions across the world. Construction of the pyramids must indeed have been a great endeavor. Each of the main three pyramids outside the outskirts of modern Cairo have been made with millions of blocks of stone, each weighing from 2.5 to 15 tons. No artificial structure on Earth have more mystery surrounding them than the Great Pyramids of Giza. These magnificent pyramids are among the largest in the world. Yet despite being so well known and the site of such significant archaeological value, you might be surprised to know not much is known about what lies inside these towering structures. And considering they were built more than 4,000 years ago, the exact technique of construction remains a mystery as modern-day equipment was not available at the time. Simple questions like exactly how they were built and even why continue to remain a source of debate among scientists. Technology is finally on its way to uncovering some of the secrets of the dead within. So let's take a closer look at these pyramids and its history to solve this mystery. Built during a time when Egypt was one of the richest and most powerful civilizations in the world, the pyramids and their massive scale reflected the unique role that pharaohs played in ancient Egyptian society. During the 3rd and 4th dynasty of the Old Kingdom, Egypt enjoyed tremendous economic prosperity and stability. Kings held a unique position in Egyptian society. Somewhere in between human and divine, they were believed to have been chosen by the gods themselves to serve as their mediators on earth. It was in everyone's interest to keep the king intact even after his death, when he was believed to become Osiris, god of the dead. The new pharaoh in turn became Horus, the falcon god who served as protector of the sun god, Ra. Ancient Egyptians believed that when the king died, part of his spirit, known as Ka, remained with his body. To properly care for that spirit, the corpse was mummified and everything the king would need in the afterlife was buried with him, including gold vessels, food, furniture, and other offerings. The pyramids became the focus of a cult of the dead king that was supposed to continue well after his death. Their riches would provide not only for him, but also for the relatives, officials, and priests who were buried near him. From the beginning of the dynastic era, 2950 BC, royal tombs were carved into rocks and covered with flat-roofed rectangular structures known as mastabas, which were precursors to the pyramids. The oldest known pyramid in Egypt was built around 2630 BC at Saqqara for the third dynasty's king, Djoser. Known as the Step Pyramid, it began as a traditional mastaba but grew into something much more ambitious. As the story goes, the pyramid's architect was Imhotep, a priest and healer who some 1400 years later would be defined as the patron saint of scribes and physicians. Over the course of Djoser's early 20-year reign, pyramid builders assembled six-stepped layer stones that eventually reached the height of 204 feet. It was the tallest building of its time. The step pyramid was surrounded by a complex of courtyards, temples, and shrines where Djoser would enjoy his afterlife. After Djoser, the stepped pyramid became the norm for royal burials although none of those planned by his dynastic successors were completed. The earliest tomb constructed as a true pyramid was the Red Pyramid of Dashua, one of the three burial structures built for the first king of the fourth dynasty, Neferu. It was named for the color of the limestone blocks used to construct the pyramid's core. No pyramids are more celebrated than the Great Pyramids of Giza, located on the plateau of the west bank of the Nile River, on the outskirts of modern-day Cairo. The oldest and largest of the three pyramids of Giza, known as the Great Pyramid, 
is the only surviving structure out of the famed Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. It stands 481 feet tall, and it alone took an estimated 20 to 30 years to build in the 4th dynasty. Known as the Pyramid of Khufu, it is taller than its neighbors, the Pyramids of Menkor and Khafre. The Great Pyramid is composed primarily of yellowish limestone blocks and was originally covered in an outer casing of a smooth, light-colored limestone. This finer limestone eroded and was carried away in later centuries. The material can still be found in the inner passages. The interior burial chamber was built of huge blocks of granite. It is believed that construction of the pyramid took 20 years and involved 20,000 workers, bakers, carpenters, and water carriers. The exact method in which this architectural masterpiece was built is not definitely known. But the leading theory is that the Egyptians employed an encircling embankment of sand, brick, and earth that was increased in height as the pyramid rose. In addition to Khufu's mummy, interior rooms of the pyramid held objects for the deceased to use in the afterlife. King Khafre, the grandson of Khufu, built the Great Sphinx, which was carved from a single block of limestone left over in a quarry used to build the pyramids. The Sphinx has the body of a recumbent lion and a human face meant to represent Khafre. It is believed that all the pyramids were once covered in casing stones made from highly polished limestone. Khafre's pyramid still has some of its limestone casing, but only at the very top. Each pyramid in Giza was part of a temple complex, which included a mortuary temple, a valley temple, and series of sloping caseways linking them together. Smaller pyramids nearby became the final resting place of various members of the royal family. Now, who built these pyramids? Though some popular versions of history held that the pyramids were built by slaves or foreigners forced into labor, skeletons excavated from the area show that the workers were probably native Egyptian agricultural laborers, who worked on the pyramids during the time of the year when the Nile River flooded much of the land nearby. Approximately 2.3 million blocks of stone, averaging about 2.5 tons each, had to be cut, transported, and assembled to build Khufu's Great Pyramid. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus wrote that it took 20 years to build and required the labor of 100,000 men. But later, archaeological evidence suggests that the workforce might actually have been around 20,000. Pyramids continue to be built throughout the 5th and 6th dynasties, but the general quality and scale of their construction declined over this period along with the power and wealth of the kings themselves. In the later Old Kingdom pyramids, beginning with that of King Eunice, pyramid builders began to inscribe written accounts of events in the king's reign on the wall of the burial chamber and the rest of the pyramid's interior, known as pyramid texts. These are the earliest significant religious compositions known from ancient Egypt. Tomb robbers and other vandals in both ancient and modern times removed most of the bodies and funeral goods from Egypt's pyramids and plundered their exteriors as well. Stripped of most of their smooth, white limestone coverings, the Great Pyramids no longer reach their original heights. Khufu's, for example, measures only 451 feet high. Nonetheless, millions of people continue to visit the pyramids each year, drawn by their towering grandeur and the enduring allure of Egypt's rich and glorious past. On November 26, 1922, archaeologists led by Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon stumbled upon the mummified remains of King Tutankhamun, known as King Tut for short, in the Valley of Kings in Luxor, around 320 miles south of Giza. The remains, like most of those found in the Valley of the Kings, were buried pyramids but beneath the sand not too far from the tombs of King Ramses VI. They found his tomb and remains in pristine condition, incredible considering that the location of his tomb had been unknown for over 3,000 years. At the time, most of the ancient Egyptian tombs had already been discovered. The discovery of his mummified body and the thousands of priceless artifacts within the four-room tomb catapulted Carter and Tut into fame. And finally, in 2019, led by French environmental geographer Hader Shisha, 
The international team's latest study and proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences opened by acknowledging that it's an already established assumption that Egyptian engineers created some type of channel from the Nile to move the pyramid stones. But until now, historians didn't have evidence of when, where, and how these ancient landscapes evolved, so the paper's introduction explained. The investigators studied five sediment samples extracted from the Giza floodplain in 2019 to analyze Poland-derived vegetation patterns and reconstruct an 8,000-year fluvian history of the Nile in the area. Combining this work with previous studies into rock layers around the pyramids, they found that a lost tributary remained at a high water level during the reigns of Khufu, Khafre, and Menachor. Reporting on the study, the New York Times noted that the origins of the team's discovery could be traced even earlier to 2013, when papyrus scraps turned up around the Red Sea. These previously unknown documents, described as official named Merer, described an official named Merer attempting to ship limestones to Giza along the Nile. Shisha told the Times, When I read about that, I was so interested because this confirms that the transports of the pyramid's building materials were moved over water. Moreover, researchers discovered evidence of many fossilized pollen grains from flowering grasses and marsh plants, both usually line rivers and lakes, thus providing evidence of sustained water levels at the Khufu tributary. Shortly after King Tut's rule, those levels dropped. The land dried out completely six centuries before the common era, leaving a mystery behind, one that is now perhaps closer to being solved. If you liked our video, don't forget to subscribe and follow our channel for more videos like this one.